As an Android developer, you may have seen or heard of some of the new language features available in Java, such as Lambdas. And you may be wondering, well, with all this cool new functional stuff available, how can I get on board given that Android only supports up to Java 7? And herein lies our problem. So you're kind of stuck with either the anonymous inner class, or if you're using Android Studio or IntelliJ IDEA, and you have a superficial folding rule to collapse these inner classes to a Lambda syntax. And this really isn't what we want. Uh, we want to have true lambdas. And so there's a pretty cool project by uh, Esko Luantula called uh, Retro Lambda, which will allow you to use lambdas on Java 7 by backporting the lambda features in Java 8 to uh, a Java 7 syntax in bytecode. And you can use a plugin for Gradle called uh, Gradle Retro Lambda which will allow you to install Retro Lambda on your Android application. So all you'll need to do is download Java 8 and add the following selection to your build.gradle file. Uh, this will allow you to start using Lambdas in an existing Android project. I have an Android project that I'd like for us to take a look at. It's called Android Arcs Java from Kaushik Gopal, and it's a demonstration of some features available in Arcs Java. First, we're going to clone this into our working directory. And what we're going to do is we're going to convert some of the anonymous inner classes inside this project to lambdas. So let's open that up and show you how that works. Um, in Android Studio, there's an inspection called replace inner class with lambda. And you can use this to add lambdas and um, convert them back and forth between anonymous inner classes. First, let's take a look at how uh, inner classes are handled in Android Studio. And so if you enable something called um, closures folding inside um, your settings, you can select that. And what we'll do is it will fold anonymous inner classes one by one into uh, the Java 8 syntax, which isn't available on Android, as we mentioned. Inside our Rx Java project, you'll find a number of examples of that. Um, of anonymous inner classes that can be collapsed into their compact lambda expression syntax um, but are stored as anonymous inner classes. And this is just a superficial folding rule available in IntelliJ IDEA um, since Java 7. So let's take a look at how this works. Um, we'll create a new anonymous inner class and then we'll convert that to a lambda um, throughout our entire project. So this takes a runnable, and what we can do is add a new one, um, and that's all well and good. But let's say we'd like to use a Lambda expression to do that. So we'll accept no parameters, uh, runnable has no parameters, and we'll do some computation. And so this is what a Lambda looks like, right? And the first thing it warns us that this is a Java 8 language feature. And so we'll want to treat our sources as language level 8. And then we'll be able to use the Lambda expression. So. And let's format that. We'll remove the old one. And remember that we'll need to add that snippet that we took a look at in order to use this correctly. So we'll just copy this and paste it into our build script. And remember, this goes into the module build script. We'll just paste that here. Let's take this out of the dependencies and add it up here. Remove that. So in order to migrate to a Lambda syntax, there are a few things you can do. Uh, you can go through your project and look for those places where you have an anonymous inner class and just replace it with a Lambda by pressing Alt enter. And this will invoke the intentions menu, and you can replace those sites individually. Or, if you want to do this in one fell swoop, you can press Control alt shift i and enter the inspection name. So this is a named inspection called anonymous type can be replaced with lambda. We'll specify the scope for the inspection, which in this case is the entire project, and we'll click OK. Now that will run 
it will detect uh, a few different places where we have anonymous inner classes and using the language level migration that comes packaged with Android Studio, then we can go through these places individually and replace them with lambdas. Um, so that's simple enough to do. And you can see how that works. Um, it's almost programmatic, so you could just tell your IDE to replace all of those sites by right-clicking on the inspection and selecting Apply Fix Replace with Lambda. And that will do that for all of the inspections that it finds. Now you may be wondering, well, how well does this work with debugging on Android, since Retro Lambda just takes those lambdas and replaces them with the bytecode for anonymous inner classes after compilation. Um, so maybe the breakpoints in your debugger don't work as well, and there's good news there. Um, everything works very smoothly. So if you go into anonymous inner class or a lambda and you place a breakpoint, then if you debug this by pressing Shift F9, um, on your device or on an emulator, then all of the debugging functions will continue to work just fine. You can continue to use the debugger just as you always did before, and as you step through your code, and it'll continue to use your existing sources just as you see them in the editor. So if we want to set a new breakpoint inside this lambda, and you can see that it'll automatically take that breakpoint from the compiled bytecode and then map it back to the exact location inside the Lambda expression. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of how to use Retro Lambda and the Gradle Retro Lambda plugin to automatically convert your Java 7 code in Android Studio to uh, Java 8 syntax with Lambdas. Now, Retro Lambda doesn't support all of the Java 8 syntax features. However, it does provide Lambdas and method references so you can get familiar with those and start using them in a project like RxJava. Thanks for watching.